I will add the pledge. Good evening, everyone. The Brookhaven Borough Council conditional use hearing will now be called to order. Please join us in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll issue the roll call. Ms. Sawicki. Present. Ms. Heller. Present. Mr. Vasquez. Here. Mrs. Fuchs. Here. I am present. Mr. Wills. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the roll call, sir. Here. <laughs> Mr. Pappas is excused and Mr. McKenna is excused. They are both ill. Take it away, Ms. Wills. Roll call, everybody. Yeah. We did roll call. That's okay. complete. Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special advertised meeting of Burr Council for the purposes of considering a conditional use application. By way of introduction, in September of this year, a Mohawk doggy daycare a Pennsylvania limited liability company filed an application for a zoning permit to operate a daycare facility for dogs at the property situated at 3215 Edgemont Avenue. The property was formerly operated as a chiropractor's office, but its first floor is presently vacant per section 1260.03 subsection E of the Brookhaven Bird 2018 zoning ordinance, a daycare facility for dogs is not a permitted use in the C1 commercial zoning district, but is only permitted as a conditional use Accordingly, on September the 12th of 2023, the Brookhaven Bar Zoning Officer, William Gavin, denied the zoning permit application. On or about September the 29th of 2023, Aloha Doggy Daycare filed a conditional use application with the Burr for the subject property requesting to use the building to daycare dogs. On October 17th of 2023, the Planning Commission held a public meeting, performed a review and provided written recommendations to Borough Council, granting conditional approval of the proposed use. Section 603, subsection C, subsection 2 of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code authorizes the Borough Council to allow or deny a conditional use application following a public hearing and recommendation by the Planning Commission. For the benefit of our residents, who may have a legitimate inquiry as to what is a conditional use and or a conditional use hearing, I offer the following explanation. A conditional use is a use that is appropriate in terms of the public health, safety, and welfare for the zoning district for which it is permitted but is subject to specific standards and a more detailed and formal review. The Municipalities Planning Code authorizes Borough Council to hear and decide an application for conditional use in accordance with the standards contained in the Borough Zoning Ordinance, provided that the specific application of the use would not prove injurious or injurious to the public interest. The MPC gives exclusive power to Borough Council to render a final adjudication 
on an application for a conditional use. Now, in considering a conditional use application, Borough Council is acting as a quasi-judicial body. This proceeding is similar to a court hearing, whereby testimonial evidence is provided to the Borough Council under sworn oath or affirmation. Exhibits will be marked and identified and where appropriate, entered into the evidentiary record. There is a court reporter present who is transcribing verbatim every word that is spoken here this evening. Every witness presented by the applicant will be subject to cross-examination and or questioning by Burr Council and members of the public. At the conclusion of the applicant's case in chief, members of the public will be given an opportunity to testify either in favor of or in opposition to the application. Once everyone has been given an opportunity to speak and to freely participate in these proceedings by voicing their opinion concerning the application, and the evidentiary record has been closed, Borough Council is required to enter a written decision within 45 days of the hearing. It is expected that Borough Council will vote upon and issue a written decision at its public meeting to be held on Monday, December the 4th, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. The Municipality Planning Code permits the attachment of reasonable conditions and safeguards with the grant of a conditional use. Borough Council's power to impose conditions must be reasonably related to a valid public interest established in the record for the application. Rather than denying a conditional use application because of some adverse effect, it is preferable under the law to ameliorate or reduce the harmful impact to an acceptable level by imposing conditions. Legal notice of this evening's Borough Council conditional use hearing was properly advertised in the Delaware County Daily Times on October the 27th and November 3rd, 2023. In addition thereto, written notice was provided to the applicant through its designated attorney, Joseph Silvestro, on October 24th of 2023. Finally, Notice to all abutting property owners of the subject property was affected by personal delivery, either to the person or to their mailbox, on or about October the 6th of 2023. Counsel for the applicant, Joseph Silvestro, has provided to my office an affidavit of service executed by Joseph A. Tenari, Jr., confirming same. And I believe the date of that is actually November the 3rd. So I'll strike that. I believe I initially said October the 6th. It was November the 3rd. Now, in evaluating an application for conditional use, that criteria Borough Council shall consider includes, but is not limited to, the following standards. Number one, will the use adversely affect the health, safety, and general welfare of the surrounding area and the borough? Number two, will the use detract from or cause harm to neighboring properties by creating a negative impact on the aesthetic character of the community? Number three, 
Will the use be compatible with the uses permitted in the surrounding areas in terms of the density or intensity of the use? Or will the use create traffic congestion, hazardous traffic conditions, or excessive traffic volumes? Five, will the use provide adequate off-street parking and loading? which will be minimally, minimally visible from adjoining public streets and thoroughfares. Six, will the use provide adequate environmental controls to minimize noise and or odor pollution? Seven, will the use include any proposed landscaping or fencing to buffer and screen the use from surrounding properties to minimize any offensive effects. At this time, Mr. President, I have a number of exhibits that I have pre-marked and will enter into the evidentiary record. B1 is a copy of the conditional use application of Aloha Doggy Daycare dated September the 28th of 2023. B2 is a copy of the commercial lease dated August 16th, 2023 between Edgemont Avenue Associates landlord and Aloha Doggy Daycare tenant for the property situated at 3215 Edgemont Avenue. B3 is a copy of the proof of publication of legal notice from the Delaware County Daily Times indicating that the seasoning's hearing was properly advertised in the Delaware County Daily Times on October the 27th and November 3rd, 2023 in compliance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. B4 is a copy of the written notice of this evening's hearing that was conspicuously posted on the subject property by Borough Zoning Officer William Gavin on or about November 2nd of 2023, again, in compliance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. B5 is a copy of the written correspondence from the Borough Planning Commission Chairman Ronald C. Kearns, Jr., to Council President Terry Heller, dated November 7, 2023, advising that the Commission voted in the affirmative to recommend conditional approval of the proposed use at its October 17, 2023 meeting. And finally, B6 is a copy of an affidavit of service of notice forwarded to all abutting property owners of the subject parcel sent via hand delivery or placed in their mailbox notifying them of this evening's hearing in compliance with section 1273.02 subsection D of the borough zoning ordinance. And again, I mark them collectively B1 and B6. And at this time, I'm gonna hand these to the erstwhile court reporter. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would ask if the attorney for the applicant, Mr. Joseph Silvestro, wishes to make an opening statement before this council relative to the subject petition. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, as you've indicated on sir, the we pulled the mic up slightly. Better? Thank you, sir. Okay. As you've indicated on the record, my name is Joseph Silvestro. Uh, I am the counselor for uh, the applicant in this matter, uh, collectively known as the Shiraki family. Uh, they are the owners and operators of a current business that they operate out of their home, um, which is a daycare business, um, which 
Um, takes care of dogs from probably 7.30 in the morning to about 6 o'clock at night, maybe a little bit later, um, to make things very clear from the outset. Uh, that is what they are proposing here. To the extent that there are any misconceptions about whether or not this is going to be a kennel or overnight boarding, that is absolutely not the case here um, for a number of reasons. Number one, it would be too onerous on the business. Number two, we think that that would in fact address one of the concerns that uh, Mr. Solicitor indicated in the qualifications, and that is um, it may cause some noise. Um, obviously, we will do whatever we can, and we will get into that as we get into the body of our presentation, but we want to make sure that the noise is at a controllable level and that it doesn't disrupt any of the lifestyle or the businesses that are adjacent or in the area um, for the business. Um, on behalf of the uh, Aloha Doggy Daycare, um, I will be presenting Lisa Shiraki, um, and as I did in the Planning Commission, I do have an exhibit which will make it quite easy to address all of the concerns. So with your permission, Mr. Solicitor, Mr. President, I'd like to present those so that the panel can look at it during my presentation. Go ahead, Absolutely. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Silvestro, do you want to have that collectively marked as A1, applicant one? So many. Would you like to pass mine around the audience? I've seen it. I, I reviewed it at the planning okay, commission. Okay, I believe we have other, we have other yeah, documents. You have plenty? Okay. Yeah, and, and right. there, there, are are additional, there are additional items. You did? There. Okay, you did that. This All is right. not duplicative um, based on the things that... Okay, my mistake. Thank you. In response to some of the inquiries that were contained in the approval letter, as well as the inquiries that came from the panel during the planning commission, we've addressed those, and this is more comprehensive. Um, are there any members of the audience that would like to copy? Bill needs one. Bill, would you pull up a chair right there? Uh, no. no. Oh. Uh, pull up one of the chairs. Uh, it would be a witness chair. And have that chair right there face the attorney, yeah. Back a little further so we can mm -hmm. see there. Yep, that's, that's perfect. But when do you get a more comfortable chair? I'm not being picky, but... <laughs> no, it's just being... Cool. What a pillow. You want a more comfortable chair as well? Yeah. Are you sure? Actually, put that one there. Now you're going to get Harry all mad. Thank you, Bill. Okay, um, as a matter of housekeeping, I want to point to a couple things. Okay. Um, B2 in the record is the lease. That lease was entered into before my clients ever even obviously got approval for it. Um, certainly that would have been against counsel's advice if I had represented them before, but I'm presenting it to the panel because it shows how committed they are to their project. Uh, the second thing that I want to let you know is that I produced to Mr. Solicitor um, a certificate of organization. They are a formal uh, LLC um, as a result of an application that was made and ratified on July 25th of 2023. And the third thing that I would like to introduce to the board is that um, there is currently a kennel application that is pending before the Department of Agriculture. Um, that is, at this point, premature to make a ruling. Uh, the first thing that they have to do is get a response or a approval or a denial from the board before they can move any, uh, any further. Uh, but the application has been made. There are a number of different types of kennel application. This would be for a doggy daycare that does not involve overnight boarding. With that being said, I have also addressed one of the concerns of the Planning Commission, and that is I have addressed a number of issues with the dog warden, if you will, from uh, Philadelphia and Delaware County. And once I get into the meat of the pamphlet that I've given you or the brochure, you will see that um, I've addressed questions with regard to the gross number of dogs that are able to be housed in the doggy daycare, as well as the staff to dog ratio um, so that we can make sure that we have appropriate management. If uh, we are so fortunate to get the approval of council on this project, 
Um, following that, before the business actually would start, we would be subject to an inspection and an evaluation from the dog warden. Her name is Megan Farrell. You will see correspondence between Ms. Farrell and myself answering the questions that I've already indicated to the panel. Um, and also, uh, I make the representation as an officer of the court that we would be subject to a further inspection and that would be governing uh, some of the boundaries that we would have as a, uh, as a business. Uh, as you can see that there are a number of tabs um, on the brochure, if we can start going through them. Um, the first page, I won't spend a whole lot of time on a bunch of things. You can look at it at your leisure, but uh, just to show you how comprehensive and committed my clients are to the uh, running of their business, uh, a little story about uh, how they came about uh, doing what they do, and at its core, it's because they love dogs. And they recognize that this is a service that is in need, um, and they have been fortunate enough so far, and they've run their business for about five years. They've been fortunate enough to make money, run a business, and also do it doing something that they love. If you look at page two, how will the doggy daycare be beneficial to the community? Um, they have addressed just about every possible question that you could as far as how it would fit into the community and during the planning set, uh, commission meeting. Um, I think that my clients did a very nice job in addressing um, how committed they are to being a good member of the community, not just focused on running their business, but how that, that can cohesively meld into the community in itself. Page three, why use a Hawaiian theme? Um, perhaps not quite as important as the other things, but um, it shows you also the attention to detail. The Hawaiian theme is basically because of it, the tranquility that you would think of when you're thinking about a situation like that. Um, they want a quiet, peaceful, orderly business um, they, they thought that that would be appropriate not only to have a little bit of fun with uh, the, the, the clients, but also to keep um, a very, very mellow atmosphere so that the dogs will always be addressed. One of the things that no one really likes to think about, but it certainly is a concern, and it is a concern in the, in, in the, the bylaws, and that is, what are they going to do with the waste? And there is a comprehensive plan on page four. Um, Doggy poo pickup. Um, hopefully adding a little levity to a situation that actually is very serious, but once again, it shows the attention to detail that my clients have for the disposal. There will be daily pickups for the disposal. There will never be an intrusion, at least as far as my clients can help it, uh, on the community with regard to any odor coming out of their business. Uh, they understand how important that is and how that could impact on the community, and they have addressed that uh, I think pretty comprehensively in the in their proposal. Um, probably number one on the hit list as far as the panel is concerned is how will they control the noise for neighbors. Um, they have done it through a number of ways and you will see here uh, they've investigated acoustic tiles. Uh, they have uh, already done some planning as far as neighbors uh, to their left are concerned if you're looking at the building I guess behind them. Um, they're going to put up some buffers, uh, some trees. Uh, most of, if we are successful, number one, in getting approval, and also um, it is listed in the approval letter of November 7th that it is anticipated that one of the conditions would be to have a fenced-in portion of the property that the, the building now is on. Um, we have specifically have plans for most of the outside interaction with the dogs and the fenced in part to be more towards Edgemont Avenue. It really is meant to be to, to enlarge the buffer between the building and the residential community. So that is what we're planning. Um, it would stretch up in front to where the sign is right now and sort of into the back. So that in and of itself would stop in addition to the buffer that we're planning on putting up um, any intrusion, at least as far as noise-wise, to the residential community. What, what type of clientele um, is anticipated to, to be coming into the community? First of all, um, you can't get a better endorsement than most of the clientele is, is pre-existing. 
Um, they have a number of clients. I think that some of them may even be here in the house today. Um, they have been running their business for about five years, and I guess the best endorsement that I could give is that not only are they running their business in their home, but they're actually living there at the time. So it is absolutely essential, you can imagine, um, to be orderly and to address all the issues that so far we have, uh, we have addressed. Um, it is also only by appointment. Um, obviously, they would take um, some calls and, and, and some new customers, but as far as their appreciation, once again, for fitting into the community, uh, they understand that can't have cars just pulling up willy-nilly. Um, they have a number of spaces, and we will get to that a little bit later in the presentation, but um, they have a number of spaces where the appointments would pull up, someone from the facility would come out, pick up the dog, and then bring it back into the facility so there wouldn't be randomness in the way that they conduct their business. And of course, a mission statement. And, and what you will derive from that is their love not only of the business that they have, uh, dogs in general, um, but they want to be a good member of their community as well. You will see the first pink tab is a number of pictures which show you the inside of the facility. At this point, they believe that it is segregated um, in a way that no major modifications would be necessary. But obviously, once you start your business, there may be a need for it. Um, they believe that certain segregation with the animals, um, that gives them some flexibility. Each room would perhaps, if necessary, contain acoustic tiles, allow them to limit the number of dogs that are interacting with each other and also segregate the dogs according to size, which is pretty um, necessary as far as management is concerned. On the green tab, the next one that you will see, or light blue, if you will, um, is something that the Planning Commission um, seemed concerned with. We also were concerned, and that is obviously when you have dogs running around in an outside area, um, there's a tendency to tear up the ground. And if you tear up the ground, then there's a possibility that with rain and with moisture, you may have some erosion. They have, as you will see in that tab, they have investigated a number of ways that they can use turf or other types of deterrents to the erosion so that you won't have runoff from the property because as you may know, the property sits up off of the ground and there's a hill right at the front um, adjacent to Edgemont Avenue, so obviously it would be some concern. Um, they have not made a uh, solid decision on what type of impediment that they will use, but they wanted the board to know that they are very, very concerned about that as well, and they have done some investigation so that they can prevent that from actually happening. If you look at the next tab, it's blue, I believe, in, in, in most, if not all, of the pamphlets. Um, you will see the configuration of the parking spaces. And this building was specifically chosen for that piece of logistics, I guess you can call it. Um, they have a number of spaces where people can pull up. Um, they anticipate, as they have right now, people dropping their dogs off before they go to work, before they go to school, um, in the morning, and in the late afternoon is probably the busiest part of their days. They want to make sure that they can accommodate everybody coming in and out. So they have those spaces. There are six spaces altogether. Uh, come out, get the dog, quick departure. And there's more than enough, there's more than enough space for the cars that they would entertain so that there wouldn't be any disruption in traffic. As I indicated before, um, to segregate them and create somewhat of a buffer noise as well as visual um, from the residential community, if you look at the next tab, um, these are the types of buffers that they would use, um, planters with either real shrubs or plastic shrubs so that um, there wouldn't be uh, visual disturbance or somewhat to the extent that 
Um, there's not a buffer already just by, by mere space. Um, again, we're, we're, we're hoping to have a fenced in area towards Edgemont Avenue, not facing or adjacent to, uh, to the residential area. But this is what we were looking at. And not only would it act as a visual and a sound barrier, but we think that it would be a good addition to the aesthetics of the community. Uh, one of the things that I think as far as cohesion in the introduction into the community is concerned is right down the street is a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And we believe that not only would that be cohesive with the veterinarian, um, Dr. Kwan, but we also believe it may be complementary as well. Um, there may be instances where uh, an appointment for a vet um, maybe is in the middle of the morning and someone wouldn't have an opportunity to conveniently make that. They can drop it off at the doggy daycare in the morning. We would have somebody bring it down to the vet, bring it back, and then they can come pick up the dog um, later on. And I believe that that may be a service that uh, is helpful to the community. And it certainly, I, I think, demonstrates that it would be cohesive with the overall complexion of the, uh, uh, or character of the, uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, on a few pages deeper, um, on the green tab, it's staff to dog ratio. What I will tell you is that in having conversations with Ms. Farrell, uh, the dog warden for Philadelphia and Delaware County, um, you will see in the email that is also in that section that there is no standard for maximum number of dogs or employee to dog ratio. But what I wanted to introduce to the panel is that my client has done uh, extensive research on what's a good or a prudent way to run your business and how many employees you need per dog. So although there may not be boundaries that are formally in place, um, once again, they want to be a good neighbor and they also want to be good business people. And, and that reflects not only on the quality of their business, but how they're able to care for the dogs as well. <clears throat> you will see the certificate of organization as I indicated. You will see in the next section a number of endorsements that my clients have had from current customers. Currently, they are carrying a special type of insurance, which you will see in the next tab. And then you will also see that they have sought quotes for not only general liability coverage, but also workers' comp coverage. And then last, you will see the actual overhead layout of the property. And I invite you all to read a little closer the brochure at your leisure. Um, I would like to address some of the conditions that are outlined in the approval letter of November 7th. Um, I think that I've addressed the first one. No boarding of any animals will be permitted. There is not any intention of my client to be boarding animals. This is just um, strictly a early morning to mid-evening, late afternoon. Uh, certainly, we would be amenable to any kind of time constraints that council would put on our business. Uh, we will not be providing any veterinary services, only doggy daycare. <coughs> Um, I believe that uh, the presentation of the affidavit of service that I have provided to uh, Mr. Solicitor uh, satisfies the notice requirement we've expanded since last time going down to Garrison Road. Um, I believe that uh, that would be sufficient to uh, notify the neighborhood. We don't anticipate, as I indicated before, that there will be major physical modifications. The only thing that there may be are inside interior modifications. Um, as it stands right now, it's not actually cubicle. 
um, but they're not weight-bearing walls. So it gives us the flexibility that if we believe that it is more prudent to organize segregated areas for dogs, maybe we have some bigger dogs that it would be better to segregate. Um, we have the freedom to do that, but we plan no changes on the outside other than the proposed fence, which obviously we would address at a different time following any decision that this panel may make. Um, the yard area for outdoor activities will be fenced, which we've already indicated, which will require approval of the borough. We will get to that at the appropriate time. Provisions will be made to address the potential runoff I've already provided in the brochure. Um, the focus that my client has to make sure that that does not happen, number one, to preserve the property, and number two, to stop any of the runoff. And the capacity or number of dogs will be determined by the dog warden. Uh, you will see the communication that I have had with Ms. Farrell. Um, and once again, although there is not any strict standard, my client is amenable, clients are amenable to any constraints that this board may believe are appropriate. Uh, as well as working it out with the warden to see uh, what's the best way that they can run their business and be uh, conducive to an orderly business as well as taking care of the dogs. Um, I have made the presentation. I will be available for questions both for the public and the panel, but I also have uh, on behalf of Aloha Doggy Daycare, Lisa Shiraki, she would be open for questions if the panel has any. Thank you, Mr. Silvestro. I do, I do have a question. Is this a Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, holidays? What, what's the, I saw the, the time frame you had spoken about earlier, but what are the days that we're looking at? Monday through Sunday. Monday through Sunday? There's no mic over there, Monday through Sunday, yes. Monday through Sunday. And is this also including holidays or no holidays? How long is the proposed lease? Three years. Three years. It is three-year lease. Okay. Mr. Wills, um, should at the December 4th meeting council decide to approve, would one of the conditions be able to, uh, to squash the business at the end of the three-year lease? I would guess not, correct? Yeah. Th that would not be uh, a reasonable uh, condition, condition okay. to right. limit the duration of the lease. Uh, They're not limiting the duration to, to prevent business. renewal. No. Yes. Okay. I, would, I, I did not think so. They are private property rights between a gotcha. landlord and a... Fully understood. That's what I thought. Just wanted to be clear. All my other questions you answered. Council, anything else? If council has nothing else, I will open I it up to public discussion. Mrs. Fuchs, go question. ahead. Um, in the brochure here, it talks about training classes for dogs that maybe bark too much. Who provides those training classes? So, going, if, if we are allowed to open. I tell you what, uh, right. Ms. Shiraki, right. just so I'm clear, mm -hmm. because this is a mm -hmm. quasi judicial hearing, right? Uh, all. Uh, testimony should be sworn or by affirmation. So I'm going to begin by asking you if you would state your full name and spell your last name. It's Leslie Ann Marie Daw Shirogi, C I A R R O C C H I. Mrs. Shirogi, would you raise your right hand? You swear that the testimony you're going to give this council is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. All right. Any questions for the witness? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fuchs, I believe you had. Yes. Yeah, so um, it says in here that um, if there's behavioral issues like excessive barking, that training classes would be provided. So who? You would provide the training classes to the dog? So I um, would like to provide training classes to myself and to my staff, which would be my family, um, by a gentleman by the name of George Whitfield. Um, I would like him to come in with us first, um, just us, and then I would like to try to do some training classes with him if, if we do have issues with dogs that are excessive barkers. Okay. So you currently have, um, I guess, 
not necessarily a roster, but you have your clientele already. Yes. So in your packet, you said that the facility could host 15 to 30 dogs. So yes. we're looking at no more than 30 dogs. Correct. With the ratio of the 15 to 1, if that's what you're going by. Yes, may I, may I say something? Sure. There will, there will never be 15 dogs loose with one person. Okay. I wanted to make that clear. It, it, that's just what the ASPCA says. And I said, okay. So I, I researched other and it 15 to one it, in everything I researched. Gotcha. So it does have capacity in my mind um, to host 30 dogs. Again, there will never be 15 loose with one person. So obviously right now, what is your current clientele? How many do you have? Um, Dory, well, I have uh, dogs of my own. So right now I, I have, I'm trying to think because I don't, I want to tell the truth. That's I'm okay. Under, hold on a minute. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> don't let the attorney scare you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you in a rotation, um, maybe like six, seven. Okay. Some of them do stay overnight at my house. Okay. Um, but they would not stay overnight at um, the, the daycare. The daycare would only be daycare. I may interrupt. I'm not playing on my phone. I'm going to Google Earth because I, I want to once again compare the size of this property to Dr. Kwan's yard. So. Sure. The, the last paper in, in the um, packet, the packet is my house. Oh, okay. In between, yeah, it's my house and my neighbors have actually come. They're closer to the, the neighbor distance at my house is closer than what it actually is, I believe, at the proposed daycare. And um, I, I just asked them to come and say nice things about me. <laughs> it, appear, it appears that Dr. Kwan's yard is comparable in size. Would would it, I, I agree. Able and I to did, dispute that? I tried to talk to him. He's a very busy doctor. I talked I to his wonderful staff, and they were really excited and said they would love to partner with us. So I said, you know, I, I wanted to show my face down there and at least say. I've never received in six years one complaint from I, Dr. Kwan's property. Mm -hmm. And when this was first presented to me, my, my, my first thought, thought was, I have two dogs, I have one dog. Anyone here that's ever called me on the phone will tell you that I may have to send my chocolate lab to you should you be approved, because he will not stop barking. Correct. And he, you know, he's out of control. <laughs> um, but uh, all my neighbors have complained about him. <laughs> Completely different animal than your dogs, I'm sure, because he was, he was uh, they broke the mold. Yes. Him. Not one complaint from Dr. Kwan, but that was my first thought. Yes, I my God, you're going to have 15, 20 dogs out here barking. But uh, Dr. Kwan indicated that dogs tended to tend not to bark, with some, some ex exceptions. Yeah. I've never heard the dogs barking in the yard as I've approached Dr. Kwan. I'm a customer of his, um, aside from my dog going nuts when I bring him in there. But yeah. I, I can't barely hear the dogs that are barking at the cats through the front glass doors and I there's no sound barriers there so that for me speaking for myself erased those concerns I asked so, and I yeah. put it in the packet as well that they said the only complaint they've ever had was customers accidentally pulling into the neighborhood I've been private. subjected yeah. to that, you know, <laughs> so that, that, that is a different and not a very pretty situation yes but that is between Dr. Kwan and the neighborhood yeah. Council, before we open it up to public okay. discussion, is there anyone else from council? I, I, I got some. Mr. Vasquez. Uh, just real quick, whenever there's inclement weather outside, I know you're going to have the dogs inside playing. Yes. Uh, I guess it's just going to be like a tile floor that the dogs will, their waist would be on, or are you going to actually try and bring them outside? The pictures, well, yeah, we would try to run them outside, the quick hurry up, do business, then bring them back. I know it doesn't always happen that way. No, no, right. So we wanted to put down flooring that would be easy to clean, um, also that they're not slipping and sliding all over the place. Right. Uh, so yeah, as, as time goes on, we just want to make sure we're doing everything right and they're safe. And I obviously don't want them outside if it's yeah, if it's, it's thunderstorming outside. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants their dog outside. No. That right. Uh, the next question I had for you: in the event of 
God forbid, a catastrophically, say fire or something, what is the plan? Say you have 30 dogs there. There's three of you. Like, what would be the plan to evacuate the building and uh, safely get them all out? I, I know it's, I'm kind of throwing you through a loop here, but nobody ever wants to think of this. To but come up with some, I mean, if they were all her size, they would be very easy to run out with, but obviously. But that's a perfect it, world. Honestly, I would probably leash them all mm -hmm. and try to run them across the street to, that, to the other business the tobacco place that's across the street right. to just get them inside, mm -hmm. you know, so this way they're safe. The chances are yeah, in, like I said, decimal that it would happen. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, that's I was just, what I would do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just curious. That's yeah. So, so that may be something that, you know, for future thought of an evacuation plan of some sort, you know, or an emergency plan Absolutely. of mm -hmm. some sort. So. Understand we're talking um, dogs, we, not humans. Uh, you <laughs> don't uh, always follow orders, but yeah. Yes. And we will have fire okay. extinguishers, yeah. you know, available throughout. Well, yeah, we would have to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then uh, just one last question. Sure. Um, I know you spoke that the fence would be a, a thought afterwards. But roughly, do you, do you have any idea on size? And it, it's uh, 945 square feet. It's in the um, it's in the brochure. That and there's a sign. There's a sign there that's. It's concreted in there. Mm -hmm. The fence would be, so if this was the sign, this would be the fence. And I, I also brought some things for you guys to see. I, I don't know, if, um, I brought the panels and I brought um, turf. This, these are the sound panels that are stuck up on the wall. And this is the turf that we yep. should be using and would have it professionally installed. This is almost like the air conditioning. Yeah. I could use that. You should see my yard. <laughs> <laughs> Where would that be installed at the sure Um in so the yard that's currently there, nice. 945 square feet of it would be dug up. And this would be professionally installed with an aeration system beneath it. So anything so that urine would seep down, but it wouldn't Penetrate. It would not be smelling, and it would get clean with, you know, it would be clean. So it doesn't trap the odor. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. And do you know that the height of the fence is four foot or six foot? Um, I would imagine it would have to be six, six foot. foot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, just, yeah. Just want a clarification. That's typical, what. typical large dog can spray and, over. And also because I'm a very, I get anxious, and I want to make sure that they're extremely safe. Um, not only would I want the fence there, I'd actually would like, um, like, a chain link fence inside of it that actually covers the top as well. In case you get a jumper. Because some dogs can jump really high. <laughs> I understand, Ms. Shiroki, that the only thing this board will be considering this evening is the conditional use for a daycare facility. With regard to the erection of a fence, That'll require the submission of a zoning permit or, or zoning application, right, to the zoning officer for the construction of a fence. See the good looking young man over there against <laughs> the corner there? That is our zoning officer, Mr. Gavin. This board doesn't approve fences. Mr. Gavin <laughs> is the individual that approves fences. So with regard to your application for a fence permit, You'd have to put the proposed height of the fence, the type of fence, whether a chain link fence or a total privacy fence, a vinyl fence, or, you know, whatever those specifics will have to be put in there. And then, of course, you'll need to show a plot plan precisely where the fence is going to be erected. Because sometimes we have issues in this bar where somebody wants to put a fence along the perimeter and lo and behold, the fence is actually erected on the adjoining neighbor's property. So we run into issues with that. So sometimes we have to make sure that the fence is clearly and exclusively right within the boundary lines of the subject uh, uh, premises. Now, Ms. Shiroki, what is the total square footage of that building? 965. Uh, well, no, 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 that's, that's the property on the grass. 
That was just the grass. That was just that was just the area yeah. of the grass that for the turf. Oh, okay. Um, I the, the inside of the building. I believe it's fifteen. Eleven. Sounds about right. I was a customer there years ago you when you started. It's approximately right. eleven hundred square feet, and yet your testimony before this council that within an eleven hundred square foot building you can properly, safely, and adequately house up to thirty dogs. Is that your testimony? Yes. And it's your testimony with regard to staffing ratios to dogs. Is it your testimony that one staff person can adequately and safely supervise up to 15 dogs? Is that your testimony? Yes. So if there were 30, that would require a minimum of two staffing personnel. All right. Any uh, other council people have any questions with regard to this witness? I, I think we have badgered the young more. lady enough. But so, go ahead, Mrs. Food. Mine is, is hypothetical because I'm sure it hasn't happened to you, but if you had, if you experienced a, a two dogs fighting, because it happens, yes. are, will the employees be trained on what to, to do safely for the employee and the dog to stop? Okay, so you will, they will be trained in that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do any members of the public have any questions for this witness and or the witness's attorney? Step on up, sir. <clears throat> Would you please state your name and address for the record, sir? Yes, my name is Daniel Burke. My address is 104 Roberts Road. And what is your question to the witness? So my question is, do you know approximately the hours of operation? You've given a time frame of 7.30 to 6.30. The testimony, sir, was from 7.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Okay. Is that correct, Ms. Shiroki? No. That is not correct. That's what I thought I heard. Perhaps I misheard. What is your testimony with regard to the hours of operation for this facility? 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7, 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to offer their and opinion? And certainly, if it was Burke <laughs> Council's decision to grant this application, we can certainly impose hours of operation as to what we think is appropriate and safe for the community. So that is something Burke Council could consider should it decide to grant this particular conditional use. Is there anyone else in the audience that has a question? Sir, step forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Are you speaking just questions or voices? Just, 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 just a question it's with regard to the testimony. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Very well. Mr. Sylvester, do you have any additional witnesses you want to present to this council? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I do not have any more witnesses. What I do have for the record is I just want it to be noted that there is a dog in the <laughs> audience tonight, and I had to point that out just to let you know that the Shirakis are somewhat of dog whispers, and we did not hear a peep from that dog all night. Oh, boy. <laughs> not one. He or she is sitting there peacefully in your arms. I wish I had the same with mine at home. What's her name? Girl? Lili? Lili. Lili. Very good job, Lili. <laughs> good dog, Lili. Good job, Lili. You could teach my counsel yeah. something, Lili. <laughs> and, and as you see tonight, our solicitor at times. <laughs> with that, Your Honor, I would uh, conclude my presentation. Mr. Just Silvestro, do you wish to move for admission what I have marked collectively as A1 into evidence? I would. Very well, A1 is admitted into evidence. Murray, do you should take a copy? All right. You have one? Okay, I'll make sure you get it. Very well. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to testify in favor of this application? Step on up, sir. 
Sir, would you state your name and address for the record and spell your last name? Certainly. It's Daniel Burke, B-U-R-K-E, and 104 Roberts Road. Um, I live very close to the property in question. And uh, I personally would like to see that property being used and not being vacant. It's been vacant for I don't know how many months now. It's actually... Uh... It was filled for a short yeah, time. It, for the part better of, part of nine was, Yeah, they've, nine, been, they've moved up to Middletown Township. Correct. I don't know how many months ago that Who moved up to Middletown? Which, which the business? heart to heart. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm confusing businesses. Yeah. The, they were there three years, I believe. Yes, they were but there. But aside from them, it was vacant for the better six out of nine years. Yes. Yeah. But my point is, you know, I don't want to see another vacant property in Brookhaven. Uh, I think that you put forward a pretty good solid plan. Um, I would hope that if there were any concerns, you would listen to the neighbors, myself included, if there should be any problems. So I have no problem. I'm in support of this. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, Dan. Dan. Is there anyone else that would like to testify in favor? in favor of? Step on up, sir. State your name and address for the record. And are we spelling last names now, Mr. Please. Wills? Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, sir. Seth Shoemaker, S H O E M A K E R. Good. Go ahead, sir. And, yeah. And address, uh, so, sir. Oh, your address. And oh, your address. Yes. Sorry. Uh, 203 Geist View Circle, G E I S T View Circle. Media, Media PA. Um, so I am a, my, my wife and I are current clients of Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been watching our dog, Rio. She's going to retrieve her for. Uh, the, almost a year now, so since Rio was very, very young, like eight weeks old, uh, we, we started taking her to, to Lisa's house. And, uh, you know, I can say that very, we've been extremely pleased with the care and the attention that Rio has, has received during that time. And my wife and I are like super overprotective with our dog. Like we, we're crazy dog people, right? So, um, you know, for us to say that, it, I find it meaningful. Um, and, and any any concerns that we may have had, and I don't really think there's been many. You know, Lisa's been very very attentive and on top of it, and, and put our uh, concerns at bay. I drop my dog off at least at least two or three times a week, uh, around seven seven thirty in the morning. Um, never had an issue. You know, I take my dog there. We go into the backyard. Uh, Lisa's property is fenced in, so I think that you know putting the fence at the property. Uh, that, that is proposed is a great idea, um, and, and pickup has been has been flawless as well. So, you know, I I fully support it. That's why we're here. We fully support Lisa, um, and and can speak that you know we, we believe that this is good for the community, um, and, and good for for the clients as well. So, and I really love the idea of coordinating with the vet. Like that would be a huge help. I think for any any pet owner would would agree with that. So, uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Thank Shoemaker. You very much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Yes, sir. Approach, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> Come on down. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Susan Namoli, N-A-I-M-O-L-I. -I, and I will live at 1314 RC Road, Swathbrook. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I just want to say I'm ne I live next door to Lisa and uh, they're very fine neighbors. My uh, husband is in very, in good shape, and you know, Luke is out there and he shovels the sidewalk for us, and Jared helps us with some things, and I didn't even know Lisa was dog sitting until one day we were talking and she was talking about the dogs. And I was like, you, you really babysit all those dogs? She's like, oh yeah, so. You've never had an issue with barking? Uh, and being... I have a dog of my own, okay. and uh, yeah, never, never had a problem. I wanted to say. We appreciate your time. Thank okay, you. Thank you for coming out. Sir, I think you know the drill by now. State your name, spell your last name, and your address for the record, please. <laughs> My name is David Madugno, M O D U G N O. I live at 1318 Ardsley's Road, Swarthmore, PA. I am on the opposite side of Sue, so Lisa's in between us. Lou and Lisa, 
great neighbors, great dogs. I have, my wife and I have two of our own. One is a troublemaker. So <laughs> when the dogs come out, my dog will run the fence and bark and get them riled up. And then Lisa turns around, yells at them, takes them all in. <laughs> I have no problem, would love to see this happen because from my understanding, it is something that is needed. I know a lot of other people that would definitely probably use this. Again, I understand noise. Believe me, even with her puppies there that she has, Dogs are dogs, they're going to bark. But I live right next door. I'm retired. I'm home all the time. Not much. I don't hear them. They're in the house. That you really don't do anything. So the noise control that you're worried about, I, I get it, but it's not that bad. If you drop your animal, your pet off at a groomer, you know what that's like. Mm -hmm. Because they all get there and boom, 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 they yell. They're kids. And they will react. But it's not bad. It is not that bad. Understood. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of? Come on up. State your name, spell your last name, and your address for the record, please. Nicole O'Reilly, O-R-E-I-L-L-Y. My address is 424 Ridge Lane in Springfield. Um, I am a friend of a realtor for Lisa and Lou, and I just wanted everyone to know just how committed they are to this, how hard they've worked on doing all the research needed, answering all the questions that have been raised. Um, they are such dog people and they just love love the animals so much and I you know I just I support them so much and I've just been sticking with them this whole time because I really want to see them get this, this place because as soon as we walked in the door Lisa just fell in love with it and it was just perfect for what they wanted to do so I really hope you you decide in favor thank you very much thank you is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of very well. Is there anyone that wishes to testify in opposition to this application? Come on up, sir. State your name, spell your last name, and your address for the record, sir. Anthony Palandro, P-A-L-A-N-D-R-O, 103 Roberts Road. It's a property right adjacent. Um, my, my only concern, really, is noise. I, I have actually spoken to Lisa, and I have no doubt she will do everything in her power to address any concerns. Uh, but my concern is noise with the number of dogs, um, how many of them will be outside at one time. And, and I don't think the inside would be a problem. You know, when I am on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just worried about it. Uh, you know, I don't think you can compare what noise they're making now with four or five dogs compared to 15 and 30. I mean, you yourself said you have one that's loud, and you would yeah. consider bringing it. And my concern is people who have loud dogs. No, I wouldn't subject her to, to my dog. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that is my concern, and I don't know what to do. But once, if it happens, you know, I'm sure she would try to control, but I don't know, can it be well, controlled? Well, he's beyond help, but I, yeah, I do understand your concern, yes. That's my only concern. You know, of course, uh, and I am semi-retired, and the, the people neighbor next to me who had to leave is a retired mother at home. The guy behind me is retired. So we're all home during the day, so the hours of operation don't come into play either. Am I accurate in stating that you're not passionately opposed, but you have mild concern or? or... I, there are today mild concerns. Okay. If it opens and I hear it every day, I will be passionately concerned. I understand. And I would want to know what, my, my fear is once it's there, it's there. If it mm -hmm. is loud, you know, uh, I mean, I guess you can always stop loud dogs from coming, but I don't know if that would actually work. That's Understand, what. sir, that the bar still maintains a noise control ordinance that applies to all residential and all business-related properties. If there is incessant loud barking that goes on all day long, 
That's an issue. And again, that may be an issue that would be referred to the code enforcement officer. If there is constant loud barking all day long that is disturbing the peace and tranquility of the neighborhood, that's an issue. And that's why we have a code enforcement officer. And we have notices of violations that are issued each and every day. We have citations that are issued each and every day for, again, violations of the Borough Code of Ordinances, including the noise control ordinance. Is there a level of noise or just a, a I think, did I read that 15 uh, continuous minutes is continuous? Again, I, I have to read, I don't have the ordinance in front of me. I do know we have a noise control ordinance. We do not uh, deploy a meter. You can uh, look it up online. But Mr. Yes. Silvestro can look it up. Do you know what that is? All of your experience, and you don't have that off the top of your head. I believe all 49 municipalities here in Delaware County have a noise control ordinance. Again, this is uh, generally high density residential areas that we all live here in Delaware County. This isn't like upstate Pennsylvania where uh, you know, never has heard a discouraging word and people don't have to, uh, again, get along well with their neighbors. Again, here there's an intensity of land use. And again, that requires courtesy and cooperation among all neighbors and all businesses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Is there anyone else that would like to speak out against Very well. Going once, going twice, that is closed. Mr. Wills, no one sitting up here has ever held one of these meetings. What is the action items? There are no action items tonight, correct? Can I just ask one more question? You may at any time, sure. Um, going back to um, his question about how many dogs are actually do you keep outside? I mean, I know right now you said you're you have about. I believe she said dogs. five to six in place. Well, no, outside. that's how many she has right now. Currently, is five to six dogs at her current. But I thought you said your goal was five to six in play groups outside. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they will not be more than, depending on size. If they were small like her, mm -hmm. probably in like maybe five. Okay. Now, and and there's many times, like I've said before, I've, I've been in my backyard. You don't even know they're out there unless a squirrel comes by. Of course. <laughs> you know, um, Edgemont Avenue is quite a loud road, yeah. though, um, between mm -hmm. like motorcycles and loud music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite, and it, it may actually act, might actually act somewhat with noise canceling. Yeah, and you're, you're not going to have to worry about wildlife issues. You're not. You know, we don't get as many deer over there, and when deer know that there's going to be that many dogs there, they will stay away. <laughs> Believe me. They, they peruse into my yard once in a while, but not as much as they did when I had two, went from one to two dogs. So I don't think you have many issues there. Shiroki, fully understand that if there are any major interior renovations to the property, or tearing out walls, especially load-bearing walls, or erecting new walls, or electrical outlets or new plumbing. Again, that all requires building plumbing or electrical permits, right? If major interior renovations <laughs> are done to the property. Normal process, nothing to be afraid yeah. of. Fire marshal, yeah. again, would inspect the property prior to you being issued a use and occupancy certificate for the property. Again, should bar council see fit to conditionally approve this application? As I indicated in my opening remarks, I expect our council to issue a written decision on this application on Monday, December the 4th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the borough council meeting. It would be my recommendation we take the matter under advisement and again, issue a written decision at that time. And with it, Mr. President, I guess we can ask for a motion to adjourn. Council, what say you? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Council, stick around.